What's going on guys? For this Rumble match, we're up against Megalo Mart, so let's get into it. It looks like the first opponent is Renee S. My opening hand is decent, it's not great. What can I do with push-ups? So right now my only option with push-ups is to do a golfing hank, which the 14 punch will be nice to try to one-shot whatever cards that the AI drops for him, however, I don't like that this is my single fuse push-up, so I much rather would have preferred if it was my quad. My other option is if I go Big Mountain Fudge Cake, I could go for the Hip Hop Bob, which will have 23 punch. The downside to this, of course, being it's not going to have the, um, the athletic buff that Hank would have with the athletic combo there, so I'm losing out on the shield there. However, the Hip Hop Bob will still have his own craze of 16, and he does 23 punch. Though Hank 1 only had 14 punch, so the Bob combo actually might be better in slot 1, even though it's not matching that athletic bonus. I do have some athletic cards that can go with Bob, as well as some fighter cards that can go with Bob, so I'm going to open with Bob to keep my options open in case I draw one of those. So Renee plays a Philip J. Fry. That means I could definitely do my... um hip hop bob and one shot that however i just drew one of those fighter cards i was talking about arcturian can go with the uh, bob there to give me the cripple all 11 as well as 20 gas the downside to that though is it will not one shot the fry which that is the goal for rumble you want to try to one shot your opponent's first card to try to get hundreds so i'm going to make that hip hop bob in slot one just to take out the fry so i'm going to kill it in one shot and i'm going to craze so my hip hop bob's attack will be stronger for the next turn he plays another Fry, so already, I already know I'm going to be one-shotting that card. At this point, I want to start just expanding my health, as well as improving my card in slot 1 if I can. So I'm going to play the Arcturian for that 7 Motivate. The Arcturian will also be healing itself every turn because of the Fighter bonus, where it gets healed 20% of its base health each turn. What's next? Death Ball, so... Just a single death ball, only has 24 health. The shield it's getting from the bonus is minimal, so Bob should have no problem killing that card. So this is going to be over this turn. So I'm going to go ahead and just combo Stick and Hank just because. But Hip Hop Bob should be ending this right now. Boom. And that's one match down. Match number two, we're fighting Hefe, or Hefe. Also, I want to point out, you might have noticed I'm no longer using Zap as my attack hero. I am using John Redcorn. The reasoning behind this is John Redcorn has the heal all three, which is coming in a lot. Um, it's coming in handy a lot to heal all of my cards to try to increase my health each turn for a higher score. It also is shielding my card, one random card by two each time. The reason I'm not using Zap is because even though Zap's punch is great when I'm running my Zap, the um, athletic bonus is shielding a lot of the athletic cards I'm coming up against, and in a lot of defense decks, people usually run heroes that have a shield built in as well, which is just wasting Zap's punch. I would much rather have a shield on my own cards to protect myself against a lot of the punches that the athletic cards have built into them, and that's why I'm running John Redcorn. So let's see, my opening hand. My Arcturian can only go with Bob, so I'm kind of limited on that. Peggy, however, can go with Big Mountain Fudge Cake. So I think what I'm going to do, because just because Hip Hop Bob worked really well last time, I'm going to open with Bob again just to keep my options open in case I get an athletic combo for him. Otherwise, I'll probably go for the Hip Hop again. So let's see. Hip Hop, 23 punch, 26. That's definitely more than Bobby's 44 health, so that will one-shot. If you remember, that is the goal of Rumble, to one-shot your opponent's first card. If you can one-shot their first card, you're more likely than not to get the hundreds. That being said, that Wingnut can be a problem. Uh, I think I should be fine. What I'm going to try to do right now is just buff up the Hip Hop Bob a bit more if I can by giving it some 6 Motivate from the Arcturian, because I really want to one-shot that Wingnut if I can. And it's down. And now Bob is now crazed two full turns. I'm in a good spot to get 100 on this match now. So at this point, what I'm going to probably do is I'll just play my Sexy Dance Fighting. Because she also has a 7 shield all to Bob's Burgers card. So if I don't end it this turn, Bob will at least be shielded.
And that's 100. All right, match number three is against Klob. So my opening hand for this, this was the Bob combo I was looking for earlier. Um, I could either do that, I could do Coach Hank. The wrestler Amy is really good because she's both fighter and athletic, so she gets both buffs. And then the pitcher Peggy is really good too, even though it's not as much punch as Bob. She has the jab, which will be going through walls if the combos they make have a wall built in. So I think I'm going to open with my Blurns Ball to keep my options open to decide what combo to make next turn. Horse Camp has 38 health. So let's see here. If I were to do my Greasy Skadooch combo, that will only do with the punch included 45. The Horse Camp card is being shielded though by 20% of the 38. What is that shield? Because that's going to be important to know. One second, guys. I'm going to grab a calculator real quick. All right, guys. So I just did the math on this, and it looks like the horse camp will be getting about eight shield, I believe. I believe the AI rounds that number up, which would give it a total of 46 health. If I were to do the Greasy Skadooch card with this, I'm only going to be doing 45 with my punches there, unfortunately. So that will not be enough to kill that in one shot. So the Bob option is kind of off the table there. If I were to do the Peggy one, it's even less damage there. The 26 jab will break through, but with the um, punch, I don't believe that'll be enough to break through to that. Actually, wait a minute, because of the shield. The jab should break through the shield. The only problem is the bodyguard that the horse camp has. So that's five bodyguard. So my 17 punch is real, more realistically 12 punch. So I'm adding 12 to my 21. No, that still won't break through all the way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my wrestler Amy combo here because she'll at least be shielded, crazing each turn, and healed up because of the fighter BGE as well. So next card they play is a Nibbler. Not too worried about the horse camp. That should go down this next turn. So what I want to do now, because of the um, Nibbler there, I could do my Blurns Ball here to have a shield built in to my Blurns Ball so it doesn't take as much damage. Or another option I can try to go for with my Peggy and Big, um, Big Mountain Fudge Cake would be making the Dancing Peggy for Leech to leech back health. The thing is though, that's a risky move because it's going to motivate Wrestler Amy by um, a lot there. And Wrestler Amy might end the match before that Leech procs. So I'm going to play it safe and just play the Blurns Ball to take advantage of that shield. And hopefully Wrestler Amy will zap the Nibbler for me. And yes, she did. I love it when a plan comes together. All right, so we got Quad Blurns Ball next. That Nibbler is going to punch. Hopefully it punches Wrestler Amy. Oh, I can't win all the coin tosses. All right. So now I have some options here of what I want to combo next. I could... No, I don't want to do Hank. That's just a terrible combo. So I could do Peggy. She'll have um, 17 punch. Combo I'm really liking, though. I really like the Greasy Skadooch because it does a lot of damage with that punch. And actually, I have to get really lucky on the punch, but it could take out the Nibbler in one shot if it punches it. I think that's the move I'm going to go for and hope I get that lucky punch. So let's see. What's Amy going to do with her Zap? Or she cripples the Nibbler, so that at least worked in my favor. And we had a punch there on Nibbler, but it still survived. Damn it. It's okay, though. It shouldn't be doing too much damage. Hopefully the Nibbler's punch hits Amy, though. Oh, God, it still went for Bob. Jesus. All right, at this point, I just need to try to start recovering my health. I'm going to play down my Peggy just because she has six heal all to all of my cards. That'll help get Greasy Skadooch back up to full health as well as Peggy's health is 50, which I believe was the highest out of all my cards in my hand, so that helps expand my overall health wall. All right, Bob's already back at full health. So at this point, I've already more or less won. It's just coming down to expanding my health wall here to give myself maximum health, because at the end of it, the more overall health I have, the closer I'll be to 100. For Rumble, you don't have to have a perfect... Um, 
perfect like score on your cards here. Your cards can be damaged a little bit and you can still get 100. I've even had it be on a match before where I had a little bit of um, damage to my hero. Like I think it was one damage and I still had 100 because it takes into account your hero health as well as your overall pool of health for all of your cards on the field. So I'm gonna play my Amy because she has the most health out of all my cards I have. And this should be 100. Bender should be going down. Am I going to take bite back damage? Nope, no bite back damage. That should be 100. This time we got Nickel Input. Nicole Input. All right. So I do have my quad push ups. I will have my bender as well to make the gender bender there, which will be like the wrestler Amy taking advantage of both battleground effects. I also could do my Asian Bender, which is only going to be athletic. However, he does have a jab and a cheer, and that cheer of 20 is really good. I could also, even though it doesn't play to the bonus, do Red Rod to take advantage of the 23 punch to do a one shot. So I think I'm going to play Bender first to keep my options open. And let's see what they play. A Fry. So. What I'm gonna to wanna to do now for that fry, I do wanna to try to one-shot it, so I think Red Rod is the way to go for that. Cause Blurns Ball will not be taking that out in one shot. The Gender Bender, even though it will be a nice, like, nice wall built in there to keep it alive there, it's not gonna one-shot the fry, and I don't want them building a wall on me. So I'm gonna go ahead and make that Red Rod in slot one just to take out that fry. Hit fry with a punch and knocked out. Plays a Hank next, no biggie there. That should be another easy one to one shot. Since I don't really need to be relying on my bonus right now for um, Athletic to take advantage of the shield, what I'm gonna play next is I'm gonna play my Big Mountain Fudge Cake to help with Red Rod, because Red Rod now can cheer music cards for 25, so that's gonna come in handy next turn. I can also combo my Big Mountain Fudge Cake with Peggy to give more attack to Red Rod because of the Motivate, which looks like I might need it here. So I think this was the right call. So let's go ahead and make that combo right there. So that's now going to motivate Red Rod by 22. So that should be more than enough to end the match right here. And I think that's still 100. Yep. This time we got Shucky. All right, I got two Blurns Balls to open with and a bunch of characters to go with them. So one thing I could do, I really do like the Ball, uh, ball Girl combo with the Blurns Ball there because it has 14 Motivate and 18 Leech. I think I'm going to open with my Blurns Ball first though, and hopefully I can draw my Bob because he has a lot of punch, which could one-shot a lot of things. So it plays a Quad Push-Ups. All right. So right now, I have a couple options here. I can go ahead and make my ball girl. It won't, won't be one-shotting the push-ups. However, it'll get some damage going. I do know the combo potential for push-ups. They might be trying to set up for a wing nut against me, which will be doing a lot of damage. So I don't want to leave the Blurns Ball in slot one alone and just play another card. I need to get rid of that quad push-ups ASAP. Question is, what's the best way to go about doing it? Coach Hank has 17 bite back, which will definitely help ensure it dies next turn. It'll speed it along. However, he'll be taking damage, and he doesn't really have a good way to go about healing himself. Fry is in kind of the same boat. All he will be doing is healing Futurama cards for 25, which is really good, but he has no way of helping himself out. So I think I'm kind of locked into going with the ball girl and hoping that they do not combo on turn one. So let's see how this goes for me. So not too much damage. Okay, played the Christmas punch out pre-combo. I can live with that. Oh, and that's great. I actually drew my own fighter card here, so I have some options now to go against the Christmas punch out. I don't want to do an athletic combo across from that because it has seven hijacked. It'll be stealing any craze value I have. However, my Arcturian doesn't craze. What it does do is it'll motivate Ball Girl by seven. It has eight leech built in. It happens to um, only shield Futurama cards, unfortunately, so that's not helping me out here, but it will be healed by the um, bonus every turn this turn, and I have some plans to make the Stick and Hank combo so that I'll have 14 heal all, helping all of my other cards. The one downside to playing this is that Christmas Punch-Out is going to hijack seven of my Ball Girls uh, Motivate there because of its hijack. Either way, though, that's my best move, so we're going to do that. 
That should also put the push-ups close to death for the next turn, too, I believe. It's down to 12 HP. And it plays Bender in the last slot there. All right, at this point, I have a couple options here. I can make my Hank combo there and get the heals going, and I'll be taking direct damage from Bender. Either way, I'm going to want to take direct damage versus letting my card die there, because then I'll be taking direct damage and just having more direct damage from that card dying. What I can do, though, is the Amy combo will have a shield because it's part of the athletic, and it'll be healing for being fighter. Plus, if I get really lucky, that 18 cripple from Amy could hit the bender, which would protect my overall um, points. So let's go ahead and try that and just hope I win that coin toss. Ball girl should be taking out push-ups. And it zapped the bender, so that worked in my favor. I just need to take out that Christmas punch-out card now, though, because it's doing damage. My wrestler Amy may be shielded and it may be healing every turn, but it's still taking a lot of damage. So I need to heal my cards back up. Okay, let's see here. What I can do now, though, I can go for the gender bender next turn, because that'll also be another card that's healing itself up. So I'm going to go ahead and open with bender first, because of his 8 wall, that'll minimize damage that I'm taking from their bender. I believe the Christmas Punch-Out card still has one more turn before it dies. Luckily I zapped it though, so that's going to minimize damage that my wrestler Amy's taking, which is good. Oh man, No Mercy Dojo. Let's see, how is this going to go down? Alright, wrestler Amy's still alive and kicking. I don't have to worry too much about my bender, because he'll be leeching when he, um, Hits, he has his wall, so he'll be fine. I can combo him later. I want to try protecting my overall points still. And I just drew a Tina, which will go really well with my Blurns Ball here. So I'm going to go ahead and play Blurns Ball in that slot there to protect my overall hero points, as well as just buff up Bender a little bit. So Viking Peter should be going down. Wrestler Amy... Awesome, Shock No Mercy Dojo, that works. And then it's over next turn, so now I want to try to heal Bender up. And the way we're going to do that is by making him into a fighter card. So we're going to go ahead and play my quad push-ups versus the single fuse, because it's going to have more overall health, which means he'll gain more heal from the bonus. That also expanded my health wall a bit by giving Wrestler Amy 19 boost to her health by, by making that combo. So by doing that, all of my cards look like they're at full health now. I don't believe I lost any hero health, so that was 100. Next up we have Lucy 6. Let's see here. Oh, this is great. In my opening hand, I have both my Leela and my push-ups, which is what will give me my wing nut. With 17 punch, 16 crazed, and 17 wall. That is a great opening card to go with. I'm going to open with Leela just to keep my options open, but that's most likely going to be my move. Lucy plays a Sportsbot 5000, which no big deal. I'm going to go ahead and make that wing nut right now. And that should be enough to one-shot that. Oh, or not. I was wrong. Well, I do not do math. I will fully admit to that. I do not normally do the calculations before I make my moves. <laughs> It's okay though, I think we're still alright. The Mulling Wall Intoxicated can be a heavy hitter, however I do have my Quad Arcturian here so I can make my Gender Bender next turn to get a shield and heal built into that. So I'm gonna go ahead and... Do I want to open with that? I could open with that and get the, the Cheer, or not the Cheer, the Motivate over to Wingnut, but Wingnut's already going to kill that card anyways. That's a pre-combo card, so he can't make it any stronger than it already is. So instead, I'm going to play Bender first. Because of that 8 wall, that's going to mediate the damage I'm taking so that I'll have a more efficient heal next turn. So Wingnut takes out the card in slot 1, and it should be over next turn. Yeah, I'll be one-shotting that Hip Hop Bob, no problem. So now we're going to go ahead and combo Bender with the Arcturian so that he gets a, bon a bonus heal from the BGE, and that should be 100. Because everybody's back up to full health. He 
Either way, left hung on by one HP, it's still over. Nothing to it. Let's just throw out my highest health card just cuz that'll be high school high school bill. And Wingnut should be ending it right here. Hank is gonna be slaughtered. Both Hanks are slaughtered. <laughs> Next up, we have Coach McGurk. Uh, for my opening here, once again, I can go for the wing nut. However, it is my weaker of my push-ups. It is a single fuse. That being said, I think opening with Leela by herself is still the best bet in case I draw a better card. If not, wing nut's still probably the way to go. Now I have some options here. I could go the wing nut. She will have 15 punch. On top of the 23 there, which should be enough to kill that Bobby, and she'll have 14 craze. What I could do, however, too, though, is the Arcturian here. 20 punch and 14. If it was my quad Arcturian, I would probably do that for the fighter heal. However, I think that this is the better way to go. So we're going to go with Wing Nut. That powder puff sucks, but I should still be fine. Could do Sports Spot for the Horse Rider Tina, which will have 10 heal all to my 10 heal all to my athletic cards. Or I could start going for the heals here too with Sexy Dance Fighting Tina for the heal on her alone. I think what I'm going to do though is I'm going to play my sports bot and just go for that. Take advantage of the shield that it's going to be getting so that the the Dale's punch can't hurt it. And Amy can go with that one there. Yeah, so I think we're going to go ahead and just go for horse rider Tina. And my wing nut is now crazed beyond the point of return where there's nothing that can be stopping it. This is my win. So let's go ahead and just throw my highest health card down, which is my Amy. And that'll be match. This time we have sword fight. All right, what are my options here? My only character is Peggy. What can I do with Peggy? I can either go Dancing Peggy or there's Cheerleader Peggy. Not too fond of either of those right now without seeing what his cards are going to be. However, in lieu of a better option, I'm going to just play Peggy and see what happens. All right, so it plays Dr. Amy Wong. Only a single fuse. That's not horrible. So Fry... What can I do with Fry? Could go for the Death Rolling, which is a good combo. Arcturian does not go with Fry. Big Mountain Fudge Cake does, however, and I could go for the Super Dance Squad. Here's what I need to think about, though. I'm not going to be one-shotting this Amy no matter what I do. So, what I think I'm going to want to do is just start building into this my um, leech built into slot one, so anything that they do play, I can get my health back. So we're gonna go with Dancing Peggy in slot one. Plays a Fry in slot two. So Amy Wong should be dropping next turn. I just drew my Amy, so that means I can actually make a fighter combo in slot two this next turn. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play my Amy just so that she has her health and we'll probably be making that combo next turn so she gets a free heal. Oh, they made death rolling. So that is unfortunate. However, it's not the end of the world. What I'm going to do is I'm definitely going to make that wrestler Amy because I can cripple its attack to minimize damage I'm taking and she'll still be healing each turn as well as being shielded and crazing because of that double buff. So let's go ahead and make wrestler Amy. Now it's going to just be a race to end this while trying to keep my health as high as possible.
So my options here, I could try to expand my overall health and just try to go that route, but I think I still want to keep my options open here for what's going to happen. I could potentially draw I could potentially draw my other Arcturian to make my healing combo with Hank. What are my combo potentials with these? He'll do 20, 18, 17. So even if I need to do a combo in that slot next turn, I think that's the way I would want to go. So we're going to play Hank first and we'll see how this goes. Slamy is still alive. No luck on the item draws this match. All right. So I think I am going to play my push-ups now because that will at least make a combo there so it has some shield built into it. It'll also increase Wrestler Amy's overall health pool by 17 for that recover skill. So we're going to go ahead and make that combo. She'll be healing up a bit too because of the BGE buff. Dancing Peggy should be healing when she does the hit. That is unfortunate for where that hit. Because now Death Rolling's gonna be doing a lot of damage to my wrestler Amy. I would have preferred it would have just killed her flat out. That's real bad. Ah, uh, now I draw the Arcturian, of course. So let's see here. At this point, I don't think Wrestler Amy is dying. So what I'm going to probably want to do, because this is going to be ending probably next turn, is expand my health wall. So for now, I'll play the Arcturian on the off chance I draw another Hank next turn. I don't think you'd even have time to proc the heals, but just in case it has high enough health and it's an option. At least the Death Rolling is now dead. All right, so yeah, I'm gonna just play my highest health card here, which will be my high school build to expand my overall health pool. So that'll be the win here. Let's see what this is gonna be because it's definitely not 100. 92. Next up's gonna be John John. All right, so I have a couple options I can do here. Sports bot can go either with Fry to give me buff Fry, or Cheerleader Peggy. Blurns Ball can go with Peggy for the Pitcher Peggy, Leela for the One-Eyed Bean Machine, and then Fry for his Derby Wife combo. I think what I'm gonna open with though is my Leela in case I draw a better option card, otherwise the One-Eyed Bean Machine is pretty good with that punch. A quad synchronized swimming. Ooh. So Bean Machine will not be one-shotting that because of the shield that it's getting from the athletic buff, unfortunately. So I will probably instead be doing my Arcturian because it still won't one-shot, but it'll have more craze and it'll at least be healing itself each turn. So we're going to go with the Will of a Housewife. Alright, what are my options here? I could go for death rolling next turn, which would be nice if I can get that heal against the sewer surfer. Either way, I'm taking some damage here though, which is what's unfortunate. Could go with Peggy. I think I'll go with the Blurns Ball, because if I draw my Amy, that'll that'll give me a card that'll let me do my 
my um heal my fighter combo with Amy that'll automatically heal for that turn because Will the Housewife is crazy to the point that it doesn't really matter what I'm doing there because nothing will have a chance to leech and slot to. Give me Amy. <sighs> Another Blurns Ball. All right. At this point, I just want to try to expand my health wall, I believe. Will the Housewife most likely won't be killing the high school bill this turn unless it gets a lucky punch. I'm banking on Blurn's Ball just flat out dying instead of um, being left with like little HP. That would help me a lot. Because any combo I make with Blurn's Ball right now doesn't really have a way to recover its health and it'll just be delaying the inevitable. I'd much rather it just die. So that being said, I'm going to go ahead and just play my Peggy over here to expand the health wall. And I'm going to pray that Blurns Ball just dies. So Sewer Surfer is going to attack. Ah, and Blurns Ball didn't die, unfortunately. And I believe it's over this turn, so that bit me in the ass a bit. Oh, there's nothing I can really do here to like help heal it up. No combo I can make with Blurns Ball that would do that, unfortunately. So I'm going to once again just expand the health wall to try to get as many points as I possibly can. What's this one going to be? Not good. 91. Okay, at least it's above a 90. And final match is up against Ollie G42. Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and open with my Leela. Take advantage of the shield and the athletic buff. They open with a Luis. So I think I'm going to go ahead and just make my Will of the Housewife right there in slot one again. Go for the punch craze combo. Synchronized swimming, that's going to be something to contend with. What are my options here? Could go that. It won't have any way to heal, though. What I can do, it's a risk, but if I go for the nun Peggy... I'll have wall built into the witch costume already, so I'm minimizing damage. And when I make her, she'll have more wall, she'll have leech to try to heal herself up, and she has 33 bomb to take out stuff on the sides. We're going to go with that and see if that'll work in my favor. Okay, so let's go ahead and make my nun Peggy. Hopefully Will the Housewife's Punch will hit Synchronized sw Swimming because that'll weaken enough for nun Peggy to kill. Unfortunately not. It's okay though, she's back to full. And I have enough wall now to survive that hit, so I believe I should be good. I'm going to play the high, my highest health card to expand my wall, which is going to be Bob here. Got the nice golden mythic wall built up there, and it's over this turn. Everybody's back to full. That's 100. And that will complete my hits against Megalomart. Final score was 983. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed the video and want to see more Animation Throwdown content, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel. And if you like the video, go ahead and leave a like. Thanks again for watching, guys. Till next time. Peace.